So this plant is one of our pre-contact foods. This is what our people were eating before wheat came. It's one of our green, traditional grains. Um, really, the Aztec and Mayan peoples in the south were really cultivated this plant a lot. Um, to the point where, and we talked a little bit about um, colonialism and colonization, where one group of people want to dominate and control another group of people through force, through military force. So that happened to the happened to the indigenous people in the south um, and the first thing one of the first weapons of colonization is to try and destroy a people's food systems so that's why today we're really still trying to regain our healthy diets our healthy balance of eating um, and all these foods that were made illegal for a while for us to grow this plant the people weren't allowed to grow it for a long time there was really harsh punishment that they would give if they were caught growing it um, so it's a blessing that this plant is still with us. The people planted it anyway. And we're still trading. We're still trading seeds with the South. So we have to really think about um, when you hear rhetoric around borders, um, that those borders are, don't mean anything to indigenous people who are part of this land, who are part of this um, seed keepers of the seeds of water. So we were always meant to trade food and medicine and knowledge and ceremony with each other. And so this growing this plant is part of that same traditions of trade and those original roadways um, before the, all these militarized borders created all these boundaries um, between peoples. So um, amaranth, we grow it by seed. When it's small, you can eat the leaves as a green. The leaves you could eat as a cook green, but probably not when they're old like this, more when they're younger. The whole plant is edible. Um, it's what they call a superfood. It has complete protein, super nutritious. Um, this is a plant that could, that could alleviate world hunger. It could solve the hunger problems in the world. Malnutrition in children in the world, it could fix that. Um, just drinking a cup of this atole every day, which will, you'll get to taste some um so when it's big the way you can tell that it's ready any questions so far no okay so the way you can tell when it's ready is the flowers start to get a little bit white um the birds start to come and eat it and when you bend it over the seeds fall into your hands just like really easily and when you look at the seeds they have like a little white ring they it looks like the eye and that's another way you can tell that the seeds are ready. Um, so the whole plant is edible, but this is the, this is the gold right here, is this grain. Um, so when the seed falls pretty effortlessly into your hand, then that's when you know it's, it's pretty good. So we're gonna just break the stalk at the, at the stem. Um, but I'm gonna sing a song the amaranth um, just because we always want to give that consent and tell the plants thank you um, for their life um, carbon dioxide they give us oxygen so you always have that breath that you can offer your plants so the way you can, the other way you can tell so all we're going to do is put that off. you're just going to snap it and start gathering it in your arms Okay, get as much as you can gather, and then um, we'll carry it down. Over our legs, so it kind of makes like, um, so that way it doesn't spill out. So you want to make sure your legs are underneath. And all you're going to do, you're going to pick off the leaves. We'll compost all this. If you want to get the little branches, we're going to clean the leaves off. This one's kind of a big one to show you. Take 
across the leaves. And, you know, just like um, my hermano Julian has talked about in the past, is this is a very special plant just because we have so much contact with it throughout its life. We're all, it has a lot of, just like corn, we're always touching it. We have a lot of hand to hand. So it's really um, loves us. It loves to be celebrated. It loves having that um, contact. So once you clean the leaves, all you're going to do is get your hands, start rubbing it. And it's better to do this when it's fresh, because when it dries, it, you can do it when it's dry, but then it gets prickly. So, but, so I like to do it when it's um, still soft. I think that's pretty good. And all that's left is some of the flowers. And even this, if I wanted to, I could boil this and make a tea and get nutrients, you know? So we'll probably just compost it today. So then once the flowers, you can also put that to the side to compost. And you can see from just that one bud, we got all this seed. Okay, and there's still some flowers in there, but we'll clean that out after we get the seed out. Okay? So you just want to make sure there's people on all ends to kind of hold the seed in. And if it starts to get to the edge, you can just kind of do this. Flip it to the middle. If there's little tiny ones, just pick them up, rub them. It just kind of, you see stuff start to stop falling out after a while. You could use it eventually for like making fires too, like if you had like a stick. That two We're going to be pros at this after all this is done. They're running around. Okay. Now let's pour this back in the bowl. So because the seed is a little bit heavier, if you drop it into a bowl when there's a breeze going by, it should separate the flowers from the seed. And you just kind of tap it out real slowly. You can see some of those flowers blowing away already. And again, you don't want to go too fast. Just real slow, let that breeze catch it. A perfect breeze right now. Ha uh ha -huh.